Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Natus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Welcome back to my clinical biochemistry playlist. In previous videos, we talked about sorbitol that can lead to cataract in people with diabetes. We talked about reducing sugars in the urine and what they mean. We talked about glycogen storage diseases, lactose intolerance, galactosemia, and the islet cell tumors of the pancreas like insulinoma, glucagonoma, somatostatinoma, gastrinoma, and even VIPoma. In the last video, we talked about cystinuria, and I told you that cystinuria is not the same as cystinosis. If it ends in osis, means it's a condition. A condition of having abnormal precipitation of cystin, amino acids, causing crystals, maybe in my cornea, or maybe in the urine, forming kidney stones. These are really painful. Cystinuria was the topic of the last video. Cystinosis is the topic of today's video. If you've watched my previous video, you know that cystinuria can lead to cystin kidney stones. That's why I always ask you to watch my videos in order. Today we're talking about cystinosis. We have too much cystin everywhere. What is cystin? Cystin comes from cysteine, and cysteine is an amino acid. What do you mean by an amino acid? Well, amino acids are the small guy. They come from protein metabolism or protein breakdown. Why do you call them amino acids? Because they have an amino group and a carboxylic acid group. Amino acid. Are there only 20 amino acids in my body? No, there are only 20 proteogenic amino acids in your body, the famous 20. But these are not the only amino acids out there. We have other amino acids that are non-proteogenic, not coded for by your genetic codon and not incorporated into your proteins. Tell me about the 20 proteogenic amino acids. Here they are. Each one has a name, a one-letter abbreviation, and a three-letter abbreviation. Today we're talking about cysteine, because if you combine two cysteines together, what do you get? Cystin. When I have cystin everywhere, a condition of cystin presence and accumulation throughout the body, you call this cystinosis. And as you recall, two amino acids together, dipeptides, then tripeptides, a bunch oligopeptides, many polypeptides, a lot proteins. Cystinosis is an autosomal recessive disease, which means mommy is a carrier, daddy is a carrier, and then 25% of the offspring are normal. Half of them are carriers. They do not show symptoms of the disease, but they carry the bad gene. And then 25% of the offsprings have the disease. This dude is normal phenotypically and genotypically. These guys are phenotypically normal, but genotypically abnormal. As for this person, this person is sick, phenotypically and genotypically. Anytime you hear of autosomal recessive, we think of consanguinity, right? What does that mean? People who marry their relatives, for instance. Which means you tend to find autosomal recessive diseases clustering in small communities throughout the world. Where's the problem in cystinosis? Accumulation of cystin throughout your body. And this can lead to a defect in the proximal convoluted tubule. Don't forget that the proximal convoluted tubule is the most active part of your kidney. It's responsible for reabsorption of two-thirds of almost everything like sodium, water, all the amino acids, all the glucose, etc. Now let's talk about the disease, cystinosis, genetic disease. What's the pattern of inheritance? Autosomal recessive, which means what? Consanguinity. Where is the tight-knit community? Brittany, France. That's why cystinosis is more common there. Where's the mutation? In the CTNS gene. What does CTNS stand for? Cystinosis. What do genes do? They code for proteins. Normally, a normal CTNS gene should code for a normal cystinosin protein. If it ends in IN, it's probably a protein or a peptide. Normally, this cystinosin should transport cysteine from the lysosome to the outside, to the cytosol. But if I have a mutation in this gene, therefore, this protein will be defective. Bad gene equals bad protein, which means I cannot transport cysteine from the lysosome to the cytosol. Therefore, all the cysteine will pile up and accumulate in my lysosome, lysosomal storage disease. And this accumulation in the lysosome happens throughout the body. Don't forget that lysosomes are present in almost every cell. So you have cystin all over the body? Yes, and cystin can crystallize. Yeah, you have cystin crystals all over the body, including in the urine. 
cyst and kidney stones are hexagonal, translucent, which means not opaque, and they tend to be whitish in color, they precipitate in an acidic medium or acidic urine. And that's why one of the ways to mitigate or prevent the stone formation is to alkalinize the urine of these cystinosis patients. Cystinosis can have accumulation of cystine crystals in the cornea, leading to photophobia and vision problems. Cystinosis is especially harsh on the most active segment of the kidney, the proximal convoluted tubule. When I trash the proximal convoluted tubule, we call this Fanconi syndrome, not to be confused with Fanconi anemia. These are two completely separate diseases. On my channel, I have a video on Fanconi syndrome and another video on Fanconi anemia. Today, we're talking Fanconi syndrome, which can lead to type 2, i.e. proximal renal tubular acidosis. For the excellent students, recall that type 2, or proximal renal tubular acidosis, has acidosis in my blood and acidosis in my urine. What kind of acidosis in your blood? Normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. And the acidosis in the urine increases the risk of precipitation of cysteine or cystine kidney stones. What's the difference between cysteine and cystine? Cysteine plus another cysteine, together they'll give you cystine. When the proximal convoluted tubule is toast, I'll be unable to reabsorb the phosphate back into the blood, which means I will end up with hypophosphatemia. Phosphate is important as a mineral in my bones. Without it, I can get rickets. So rickets is not only caused by lack of vitamin D, it could also be caused by lack of phosphate, which could be caused by proximal renal tubular acidosis, which could be caused by Fanconi syndrome, which could be caused by cystinosis, which is caused by a genetic defect in the CTNS gene and cystinosin protein. History and physical exam, signs and symptoms of rickets, signs and symptoms of vision problems, I can see deposits in the cornea on ophthalmological examination. The patient complains of stone symptoms, flank pain that radiates the groin and sometimes to the perineum, pain on urination, recurrent urinary tract infections, and sometimes even hematuria. How can I diagnose cystinosis? Blood tests, urine tests to look for the stones, ultrasound and CT scan to see the stones, Management. There is a medication called cystiamine, which decreases cysteine in the lysosome. To decrease the risk of stones, hydration, 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 hydration. If the stones form in an acidic urine, you do the opposite. Alkalinize the urine. If the patient cannot pass these stones spontaneously, then we can destroy them by laser. Them here refers to the stones, of course, not the patients. Do you remember your basic chemistry? Here is a solvent, water. And here is a solute, like salt. I add salt, it dissolves. I add salt, it dissolves. So still, the solution is unsaturated. How did you know? Because as I keep adding salt, the salt keeps dissolving. And then I reach the point where I am fully saturated, which means any more salt you add will lead to crystallization crystal formation. This is called supersaturated. And this is what happens in urinary stones. How do I decrease the risk of urinary stones? Either increase the solvent, water, by drinking more, hashtag hydration, or decrease the solute, either by chelating the cystine or by changing the pH of the urine to decrease the risk of precipitation. Medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. That's why studying chemistry is so important for a physician. And that's why most doctors running around the hospital are doofuses, because they suck at chemistry and math and physics. What's the difference between crystals and stones? Crystals are smaller, stones are larger. If I have a few crystals in the urine, maybe it's not a big deal. But stones are always bad, always a pathology, always a disease. Crystals act as a starting site, a seed for stone formation. The more crystals I have for a long period of time, the greater my risk of stone precipitation or stone formation. A stone in the urine or in the kidney is called nephrolithiasis. A stone in my salivary gland or salivary gland duct, cyalolithiasis. In my ear, autolith, 
in my stool phacolith, which can lead to appendicitis if it gets stuck in my appendix, because the appendix is a blind-ended pouch. How do these cystin stones look like? They are hexagonal, they are translucent, they are white in color, they precipitate in acidic urine. To learn more about kidney stones, check out my video titled Urinary Stones or Nephrolithiasis. You'll find it in my lab's playlist and in my nephrology playlist. Cystinosis can lead to Fanconi syndrome, which can lead to type 2 renal tubular acidosis. To learn about the different types of renal tubular acidosis, which cause normal anion gap metabolic acidosis, download my acid base imbalance course at metacosisperfectsnatus.com. If you do not want to download my premium courses, but would rather watch them right here on YouTube, click the join button choose the highest tier to gain instant access to more than 300 premium videos right now. Please subscribe and hit the bell, support my channel here or here, go to my website to download my notes, courses, and cases. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.